Duck, the great western engine, worked hard in the yard at the big station. Sometimes he pulled coaches. Sometimes he pushed freight cars. But whatever the work, Duck got the job done without fuss. One day, Duck was resting in the shed when Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Your work in the yard has been good. Would you like to have a branch line for your own? Yes, please, sir, replied Duck. So Duck took charge of his new branch line. The responsibility delighted him. The line runs along the coast by sandy beaches till it meets a port where big ships come in. Duck enjoyed exploring every curve and corner of the line. Sea breezes swirled his smoke high into the air, and his green paint glistened in the sunlight. This is just like being on holiday, he puffed. Well, you know what they say, laughed his driver. A change is as good as a rest. Soon, Duck was busier than ever. Sir Topham Hatt was building a new station at the port. Duck pulled the heavy freight cars wherever they were needed. Bertie looked after Duck's passengers, and the other engines helped too. But the work took a long time. Noise and dust filled the air. Don't worry, whistled Toby. The station's nearly finished. And on time, too, said Duck thankfully. Duck felt his responsibility deeply and talked endlessly about it. You don't understand, Donald, how much Sir Topham Hatt relies on me. Ach, aye, muttered Donald sleepily. I'm Great Western, and I... Quack, quack, quack. What? Ye heard? Quack, quack, ye go. Sounds like ye'd an egg laid. Now wheesht and let an engine sleep. Quack yourself, said Duck indignantly. Later, he spoke to his driver. Donald says I quack, as if I'd laid an egg. Quack, do you? pondered his fireman. He whispered something to Duck and his driver. They were going to play a joke on Donald and pay him back for teasing Duck. The engines were busy for the rest of the day, and nothing more was said. Not even a quack. But when at last Donald was asleep, Duck's driver and fireman popped something into his water tank. Next morning, when Donald stopped for water, he found that he had an unexpected passenger aboard. A small white duckling popped out of his water tank. Now, do who's behind this? laughed Donald. The duckling was tame. She shared the fireman's sandwiches. and rode in the tender. The other engines enjoyed teasing Donald about her. Presently, she grew tired of traveling and hopped off at a station, and there she stayed. That night, Donald's driver and fireman got busy, and in the morning, when Duck's crew arrived to look him over, they laughed and laughed. Look, Duck, look what's under your bunker. It's a nest box with an egg in it. Donald opened a sleepy eye. Well, 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 you must have laid it in the night, Duck, all unbeknownst. Then Duck laughed, too. You win, Donald. It'd take a clever engine to get the better of you. There's a pond near the Duckling Station. Here she often swims and welcomes the trains as they pass by. The station master calls her Dilly, but to everyone else, she is always Donald's duck.